Hello everyone, this is Melanie and uh, now I'm going to show you how to make a video presentation. So you know that I'm not on good terms with technology, so I'm just going to show you the principle and I'm sure that you can do much better than me. So first you need to find just a couple of pictures, uh, then you find the file. In our case, this is a Thing 3 CD2 track number 10. Yeah, so you play the audio first and here are my pictures famous criminals what do these three men have in common all are or were incredibly rich at some point in their lives however there's little to admire in their apparent success they all got their money in deeply dishonest ways one of the most common ways of stealing money these days is to steal it from your company it's called embezzlement and dennis kozlowski is very good at it Kozlowski was a top manager at an American company named Tyco a few years ago. Ironically, one of the company's most recognizable brands is ADT Security. Kozlowski and another senior manager decided to help themselves to the company's money. It was a lot of money, and Kozlowski wasn't afraid to spend it. He bought a house costing $19 million and an apartment in New York for $18 million. He even spent $2 million on a private concert from the singer Jimmy Buffett. Altogether, he managed to steal $600 million before someone noticed. He is now in prison and has a lot of time to think about his success. Ronald Biggs is involved in the Great Train Robbery of 1963. Early one morning, a gang of men stopped a train on the British countryside, they hit the train driver over the head and drove the train towards a bridge. A lorry was waiting underneath and they dropped 120 mailbags of money from the train into it. Then they drove to a farm nearby and shared out the money. Biggs got 147,000 pounds, which was a fortune at that time. When the police later found the farm, Biggs's fingerprints were all over the place. He was caught and sent to prison, but escaped after 15 months. Biggs avoided British justice for almost 40 years, and then Australia, and then in Brazil. He returned to Britain in 2001 because of bad health and died in 2013. American Albert Gonzalez, also called the hacker, worked for the U.S. Secret Service in the early 2000s, trying to catch cyber criminals. But he didn't stay on that side of the law for long and soon formed his own gang of hackers. They planned to make millions, and they did. The gang hacked into the computer networks of huge retail stores. They managed to steal the details of 140 million credit cards and sold them to criminal organizations in other countries. They were successful for some time, but an international police operation finally tracked them down. Gonzalez was sentenced to 20 years in prison, but his victims have lost millions of dollars. That's it. So uh, good luck with your video presentations. I'm looking forward to watching them. Bye-bye.